Hello, this is Professor Alaric Nordia, and this week in this mini lecture, we're going to be looking at some ethics, and in this case, uh, specifically medical ethics. So today we're going to have a look at unit 731. Now, some of you may have heard of this, and some of you may not have, but we're going to go over this information. So when it comes to medical ethics, uh, most people can think of one of the worst examples of ethics, uh, and that was Josef Mengele. And he was known as the Todes Engel, or Todes Engel, uh, which it means basically angel of death in German. He was a so-called doctor in Nazi Germany, and he did experimentation on children uh, and also on um, other captives, men and women, civilian men and women. Um, because of the terrible things that he and his team did, the Nuremberg Code was created to stop medical professionals from basically acting like they are God and uh, just killing people for science. Uh, He's a very well-known case, but we're going to talk about a less known case, which kind of makes even Josef Mengele look like a gentleman in comparison. Uh, what we're going to be looking at is unit 731. So this uh, unit 731 in Japanese is called Nanasan Ichi Butai and it's short for the Manchu Detachment 731. Basically, it was a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit of the Imperial Japanese Army that undertook lethal human experimentation during the years 1937 to 1945, which would be the Second Sino-Japanese War. And it was based in the Pifang district of Harbin in northern China. The official name is actually the Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department of Kwantung Army uh, uh, in Japanese Kantogun Boeki Kyusuebu Honbu but it was nothing of the sort. It was actually the very dark secret of Manchu Corps. So it was divided into eight divisions. Division one was research on bubonic plague, cholera, anthrax, typhoid, tuberculosis, using live human subjects uh, for this purpose. And a prison was constructed to contain about three to 400 people. Division two was research for biological weapons used in the field and this was to make devices to spread germs and parasites. Division three was uh, the production of shells containing biological agents, and this was stationed in Harbin. Uh, number four was bacteria mass production and storage. And then division five was training and personnel, division six to eight equipment, medical, and then administrative units. So obviously these so-called doctors, they knew that the work they were doing was illegal or maybe perhaps not illegal in the sense that they weren't specific laws saying that you must not do this, but it was certainly completely immoral. Uh, so these researchers, they called test subjects logs. Uh, because they couldn't really write that they're doing human experimentation. Um, and then when they, they put their articles out, because they couldn't say human subjects, what they did was they called them Manchurian monkeys or long-tailed monkeys, which is actually a racial slur then used for Japanese, uh, that Japanese soldiers used for Chinese people. These researchers, they included doctors and bacteriologists, people who had sworn to save lives, not to take it. 
but obviously that was not what they were doing. Now the main leader of this was uh, Shiro Ishii. He is responsible for three things. Uh, weaponizing plague into bomb forms. So he, he found a way to infect fleas with the plague and then those uh, infected fleas were put into specially designed bombs. And he dropped these bombs on Changde and Ningbo uh, on the cities there, killing thousands of people from plague. And he also planned to drop pest bombs on the city of San Diego in uh, America. So on the 6th of May 1947, Douglas MacArthur wrote uh, to Washington DC saying that additional data, possibly some statements from Ishii could be obtained uh, by informing Japanese involved that the information would be retained in intelligence channels and would not be uh, employed as war crimes evidence. So basically Ishii was given immunity uh, in 1948 and he never went to prison for any of his crimes. He disappeared for a while in 1947 and then he showed up again later uh, and he died on the 9th of October 1959 from laryngeal cancer at the age of 67 in a hospital in Shinjuku, Tokyo. And um, yeah, he certainly, he certainly was not, not a very pleasant person. Um, so other criminals that were involved with him were uh, Ryoichi Naito and then Professor Masaji Katano Yoshio Shinozuka, Yasuji Kaneko, Kazuhisa Kanazawa, Ryoichiro Hota, Shigoe Shigeo Ozeki, Kiyoyashi Minoe, Maseteru Saito Hitoshi Kikuchi, um, and several others as well. These are all people that were doctors or civilians, um, researchers, people that really should have known better. So there are many crimes. One of them was that they would administer diseases under the guide, guise of vaccination. So they said, we're giving you a vaccination, but they were actually giving people the disease. They also did vivisections of men, women, and children, and infants, all without anesthesia, just basically cutting open live people. They also raped people. Uh, they tested chemical weapons on live prisoners. They tested biological prisoner weapons on live prisoners. Uh, general weapons like uh, flamethrowers, hand grenades, all these things were tested on live people. Uh, the plague bombs that they dropped on Chinese cities killed at least 400,000 people, but possibly way more than that. They also had forced pregnancies to experiment on children and babies. They froze people, boiled them, all kinds of things like this. Now we have the admission here of Nakagawa Yonezu, who was a student at the time and... Um, he saw actually some of the, the things that they had done. So he said some of the experiments had nothing to do with advancing the capa capability of germ warfare or of medicine. There is such a thing as professional curiosity. What would happen if we did such and such? What medical purpose was served by performing and studying beheadings? None at all. That was just playing around. Professional people too like to play. Well, that's a very macabre but that's basically what they did. They just murdered people for the fun of it. Um, these are references that you can learn about more. Um, and 
we can see now why medical ethics is so important because whether someone is a doctor or a researcher, they really need to be um, conscious of the value of life and they need to be behaving in an ethical manner. Otherwise, they can be capable of doing horrendous things that bring harm to wider society.